Okay, on to the very, very last skill now that we've got for vectors. And we're going to be reflecting this time a line in a plane, okay? So, um, this is the diagram that I've got drawn here. We've basically got a line and we've got a plane. And then we've been told that L2 is the reflection of that line in the plane. And we're going to try and find the vector equation of the line. Now, this is the kind of 3D version of the diagram. The way that I would probably draw this diagram is I would say, OK, well, there's my plane. Oh, look how 3D I've made it with some dashed lines. And then I'm going to have a line going through it, which is L1. And now I'm going to draw my reflection of the line in a different colour, which is going to be L2, like this. OK? And the n, correct, let's actually add n in because we know, we've already learned from that previous one how useful it is that n is going perpendicular to the plane. That's not particularly perpendicular. I guess I could put it up here as well. We know that this is the vector n that we've got. Now, I've written what the strategy is, but we can actually think about this strategy as well, okay? I need to find out two points um, that I can reflect one of the points and I can also find the intersection point. If I find this intersection point that I've got here, then that is on both of the lines. I then need to, from line one, I need to find a point that is on line one, and I need to reflect it so that it goes up here to line two. Once I've done those two things, I've got two coordinates on line one, which goes through the, the intersection point, I've then got two coordinates that are on L2, and one of them goes to the intersection point. What do you think I then do once I've got those two coordinates? You can find the equation of the line. You can find the equation of the line, because you've got two coordinates. So this one kind of collapses down into a different kind of question. This changes into find the intersection, then reflect a point on L1 to L2, and then it becomes find the equation through these two points, OK? So I'm going to start off by finding the intersection. And the intersection I'm going to call capital X just because I'm picking a letter. It's no, you, don't, you can call it whatever you like, okay? I'm just gonna call it capital X, just because it kind of makes me think of intersection somehow. I don't know, it just helps me to think of it in that way. So I better do some work here. First of all, L1 doesn't look like it's in the form I want it to be in. What is the form I want it to be in? Two, four minus six. Good. And then my equation of the plane is r dot what? 2 minus 2y. Yep, equals 8. OK, so this is the same process as before. I'm going to find out the intersection. So I'm going to do this dotted with this equals 8. I'm going to save a little bit of our time now by just not rewriting. I'm just going to multiply the top by 2. So I get 4 plus 4 lambda minus 12 plus 6 lambda minus 6 plus lambda equals 8. So what's that? 11 lambda equals 8 plus 6 plus 12 minus 4 equals 22. Oh, thank goodness. Lambda equals 2. So if lambda is equal to 2, the point of the intersection x will be substituting lambda equals 2 in here, OK? So I'm going to get 2 plus 2 times 2, 4 minus 2 times 2, and minus 6 plus 2. So that's 6, 0, minus 4. And then this then, for me, feels helpful to come back and say that this is 6, 0, minus 4. So you, you know how many pages you get when you do an exam. Why not just draw a really big diagram and put all of the stuff you need on the diagram to make oh. it super easy? 
Next time we do a test, I'm going to give Ishak just like the tiniest amount of paper. I'm going to give him like a piece of paper like this big and see if he can do it. Oh, it's a terrible idea, isn't it? Nobody's going to watch that. So that's what the intersection point is. We now need to do the same thing that we just did in the previous question. So the thing that we did on the previous question was we reflected a point on L1 to L2. But do I even know a point on L1? Yeah. What is it? Um, two, four, six. Good. I know that 2, 4, minus 6 is on it. So I'm actually going to come back over here and I'm going to say this is 2, 4, minus 6. And now I'm going to be thinking about this equation that I have here. This line equation. What if they gave you a Um, then you would have to find another point by just substituting in a different oh, value yeah. for lambda. You could just generate another point. Yeah. Good question, though. OK, have you got space below this if I go down a bit? Yeah, OK, yeah. so we are now going to be dealing with this thing that I've got over here. So I'm going to call this, and I'm actually going to try and do what I told you to do earlier. We, uh, we wrote out a strategy, like Sam said was a good idea. We're now going to find the equation of the line perpendicular to the plane and going through a point on L1. In other words, the pink line that I've just drawn on my board. What is the equation of that line? Actually, let me just give you a chance to write some stuff down. I know I'm doing quite a lot here. What's the equation of the pink line? R is equal to 2, 4, minus 6. Yeah. Good. I should have really written here that n is 2 minus 3, 1, isn't it? 2 minus 3, 1. This diagram actually become, become, can become way more helpful because we probably shouldn't use lambda. You're right. I'm going to just use mu. So I'm going to say plus 2 mu minus 3 mu plus mu. So this n has come from the fact that that's the, the direction of the pink line. And I want to now do the same process as before to find out where does it intersect the plane. So I know I'm going to do this one with the same plane as before, which was equal to 8. So I'm going to dot these two together, which is 4 plus 4 mu minus 12 plus 9 mu minus 6 plus mu is equal to 8. So that's 14 mu equals, I don't know, 8 plus 6 plus 12 minus 4 equals 22. Good. I think this is all right, yeah? 2 minus 3, 1, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 mu. 22 over 14 is 11 over 7. So mu is 11 over 7. What? Yeah, and then we're going to do that same trick that we did before. So you know that was me telling you, like, yeah, do a big diagram. I mean, I obviously should have done a way bigger diagram than this. So over here, lambda is, oh, not lambda. 11 over 7. So mu here is 0. Mu here is 11 over 7. So mu up here is 22 over 7. So we can say, let's give that a name. So we've called that x. Why don't I call this point now uh, m? Or well, is that confusing because the last time I called m was the intersection? No. Whatever, it's just the letter, OK? So we're now going to find out what m is by saying that mu is 22 over 7. So the position vector of m is 2 plus 2 times 22 over 7, which is 44 over 7, 4 minus 66 over 7, and minus 6 plus 22 
over 7. So 2 plus 44 over 7. We've got 58 over 7. Minus 38 over 7. And then we've got minus 20 over 7 here. So now what's the next bit of the strategy? Good, so we know our L2 passes through M and X. So we need to find out the vector MX, which is X take away M. X is 6, 0, 4. Obviously, you could subtract them the other way around if you wanted to. And I'm going to take away M, which is 58 over 7, minus 38 over 7, and minus 20 over 7. So we get minus 16 over 7, 38 over 7, and minus 8 over 7. Any suggestions of what I can do for that direction? Uh, yeah, I'll make it look nice. So because this is the direction, I can simplify. So the direction is uh, minus 16, 38, minus 8. But I can do some more simplifying. So I can have minus 8, 19, and minus 4. And if you wanted to, you could flip them if you wanted to start with a positive. So. The equation of L2 is R equals 6, 0, 4. 6, 0, minus 4, plus, we've run out of letters, so I'm going to go with T, minus 8, 19, minus 4. T is a common one to use for this. <laughs> there was me saying we could probably go home a bit early, but here we are yet again. It's long, right? It's the longest thing you can do with vectors. So let's just quickly clarify what we did here. Um, so it's well worth, when you revise, it's well worth saying, if I'm reflecting a line, I would have a flashcard that says, find the intersection, reflect a point of L1 onto L2, and then find the equation through those two points. It's a hard strategy to remember. Obviously, it makes sense. But it's one of those things that you just want to be able to look at the question and just go, I know what I'm doing. And that's what I mean when I've talked about those three types of revision. That's what I mean by memory. This is something that you, if you want to be at an advantage, reflecting a line, bam, I know exactly what to do. Okay? Rather than being sitting there for five minutes, and I know you'd all be able to get to the end goal, but those are five minutes that you can't afford to spend on not having something memorized. So we found the intersection. That was the easy part. Then we found the equation of the line to be able to do the reflection. The we then found the intersection of that line, which was mu was 11 over 7, and then we doubled it to 22 over 7 to find out the coordinate of m. Then we found out the direction of that line. We played around with the direction to make it look nicer, and then we came up with the equation of the line. So the questions that you guys are going to do about reflecting them, I think all I've got on this is just 7, 8, and 12 from exercise 9 F. Uh, might have a look and see if there's some stuff in the mix exercise you can do. And you need to be perfect with your skills, ready for when I see you next Monday, so we can do some exam questions that are a bit more crazy on vectors. Yeah. That's it, we're done with vectors. And we're on to mechanics now.